meets our total shareholders' equity section. Yes? Does Treasury stock ever go away? Never. Okay. It, it gets lumped back into the retained earnings section usually. You know, it gets reduced. It doesn't. Well, if you sell that stock again? If you sell it again, then it comes back. You're exactly right. If you sell back the Treasury stock. But we don't keep it as part of our contributed capital. But you're exactly right. If we do sell it, then it will come up again. So it's not reclassified as another? No. It's, it's part of your... But yeah, it your would become common stock then. There. Then it would become common stock if you sell it back again. Sure. Correct. Okay. So next, go through and... 4-4, um, four, four, important. You're going to have something like this on your test where you have to, you know, um, pinpoint the various classifications. Know those. Okay? Do I tell you too much about your test? Shouldn't do that anymore. I want you to succeed. Okay, um, I am not making you do a balance sheet. You know, you just have to do the stockholders equity section. Um, did you guys have a problem like this? This is important to be able to determine. So when you look at the various aspects of the um, balance sheet, how you're able to determine the other aspects of the balance sheet. So for example, if you are given certain aspects of assets, such as long-term investments, intangible assets, and total assets, we should be able to figure out our current assets. And they gave us our property, plant, and equipment, our total assets of 142. So basically, this helps you to see how the various um, parts of the balance sheet play out with one another. So if we know our total assets are 142.2, and they give us our intangible assets and our long-term investments, and our property, plant, and equipment, shouldn't we be able to figure out our current assets? Make sense? In the same respect, if we know that our total assets are 142, we then need to know that our liabilities plus our shareholders' equity are going to also equal 142. So when it gives us our current liabilities and it gives us our That's all it gives us. It doesn't give us our long-term liabilities or our total liabilities. But if you look at sh shareholders' equity, look what it gives us. It gives us the retained earnings. It gives us our additional paid in capital, our OCI. And it tells us the company didn't issue any stock. But we could figure out, because of 2014, how much stock we had in 2013, can't we? Because it didn't issue anymore. So if that's 20000 in 2013, we pretty much have all the information we need for our shareholders' equity section. So we know our assets, our total assets. We know our shareholders' equity. The difference are our total liabilities. Does that make sense? Know this. You have these solutions. It's really important for you to be able to see the relationship between them. Okay? Enough? So, um, let's look at this one. 
this E411, the Statement of Shareholders' Equity. I just want you to be familiar with these. On January 1st, Powder Company provided the following shareholders' equity section of its balance sheet. So the beginning of the period, here's the balance, this section of the shareholders' equity. But during 2013, the following transactions and events occurred and were properly recorded. Powder issued 1,800 shares of common stock at $13 per share. What are we going to do here, guys? Well, yes, but we're going to take 1,800 shares at five bucks. We're going to take the difference for the premium. And add the difference as additional paid in capital. Exactly. So that transaction, if you start with your beginning balances, you can show the changes to come up with your ending balance. So if we go here, this is 413. Powder, no, it's gotta be 411. So do you see how we started with 37.4? We issued um, 1,800 shares, but it had a par value of five bucks a share. So we show the 9,000 here, and the difference goes into additional paid in capital. Then, excuse me, Powder issued 340 shares of preferred stock at 130 a share. What's the par value? 100. 100. So do you see here, we show the par, 34,000 here. The difference goes here. Then, Powder earned net income of thirty-eight nine fifty. Where's that go? Net income retained. Um, retained earnings. Here's our net income here. Okay. Then it tells us it paid seven dollars per share dividend on the preferred stock <coughs> and a dollar per share dividend on the common stock. Outstanding at year end. What do we need to do? We need to figure out how much stock is outstanding. That's why we show that par like we do. Okay? So, how are we going to figure that out? If we have 100, 1,268 1, shares, right? Yep. No, that's not yeah, right. You divide that number by 100, and it's 1,268. 1268, okay. So we basically, a buck for, um, or seven bucks for preferred, preferred shares times our 1268, tells us what our common, our um, preferred dividends are. And then a buck for common dividends, and then we're gonna take this 46.4 divided by $5 par to determine our shares outstanding, correct? Then we know our dividend there. We subtract those dividends from our retained earnings. Retained earnings is always a balance of net income minus dividends. So here, guys, we have our beginning balance and our end balance of our preferred, our common, our paid in, paid in, retained earnings to give us our ending balance. Easy, isn't it? Can you do it again on the test? I hope so. I <laughs> yes, you're going to. So guys, look at E12 also. Go through those so you're ready. Now, which problems did you guys have for homework? Five, nine, ten. Five, nine, and ten? So, problem four, five. Here's one of these juicy problems. So, what can they give us we can start with? I think they gave us some more information than this. What does it say on the next page, guys? Uh, uh, at the end of 2013, the amount of long-term liabilities is twice the amount of current liabilities. 
at the end of 2013, the amount of long-term liabilities is twice the amount of current liabilities. Okay. So. There's more. Okay. Um, there are 2,900 shares of common stock outstanding. As of the end of 2013? Yep. And then they've got a batch of stuff for during 2014. Okay, so let's look at common stock. We know there are 2,900 shares of common stock outstanding. What does it tell us our common stock is par? So we can figure out B right away, can't we? Yep. Right? What else do we have? Long-term liabilities are twice the current liabilities. So our long-term liabilities are twice current liabilities. So our long our total liabilities are fifty one three. Right? Oh, I'm sorry, 51.9. So how can we figure out our long-term from our current liabilities? Two times. If you divide, two, if you divide total liabilities by three? Correct. If we divide 51.9 by three, one-third should be current then the t times two would be long-term or whatever, yeah, long-term liabilities, right? Mm -hmm. Then from there, we have our total liabilities are 51.9. We have our retained earnings of 83. We know our contributed capital of 66.7. We have our OCI, accumulated other comprehensive income. So what are we missing for our capital? Additional paid in. That's it, right? which ultimately the total stockholders equity will give us. So basically if we took our OCI, we took our retained earnings, our total contributed capital, we're close. Let's go and pull up what I'm missing. So basically for, this is problem four five, Four five. So the we don't have our current assets. We had our long-term investments. We had our accumulated depreciation and our intangible assets. So our current assets, they did give us working capital. Working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. They gave us 17.3, right? So if they gave us 17.3, and did they give us our current liabilities? 35? No, we figured that out. Okay, we figured that out. So we can figure out our current assets because if we know our working capital is 17.3, working capital is equal to current assets minus current liabilities. See what I'm saying? So we can take our working capital plus our current liabilities to calculate our current assets of 35.2. Make sense? Now, our property, plant, and equipment of 153 got that part. I'm just trying to see what else. So we'd know that. Would we know our total assets yet? No, we wouldn't know that because we needed to come up with a, um, the additional paid in capital. We came up with our stock. 
Did they tell us? Yes, they did. They told us our total.